Good morning and welcome to St. George's United Methodist Church. I'm so happy that you're here with us this morning. And today is a special Sunday. We're celebrating two different things. First of all, you see the American flag on the screen with me. It is Flag Day, the official day of Flag Day this Sunday. Always the second Sunday in June is a time that we celebrate old glory. And today is uh, the official day of Flag Day. And we'll be talking about that in just a moment. And also today is our celebration and praise service. And it's a time in our history and culture here at St. George's that we celebrate what God has done and we praise God for his never-ending love and mercy. And in this day, we'll have some special music more than normal. And also, too, that in this time, it's a time to reflect of what God is doing. Uh, it's a steep, like I said, it's a steep tradition going back to when the farmers would bring in their uh, tithe from the harvest of whatever crop it may be, usually strawberries at this time of year, and it is a uh, time when we just celebrate what God is doing. And uh, if you follow uh, weather and stuff like that, you know that the first full moon in June is the strawberry moon, if you missed it because it wasn't red, but uh, it's a time when the Native Americans knew that it was time to harvest the strawberry crop. And so today we come together to worship God and to praise God and to look about what God is doing and where we are going. So with that, let's turn to talking about the flag. You know, our countries around the world and states design flags and spend many different uh, hours trying to come up what captures their identity of who they are. And we know that our uh, American flag stands for our freedom that we have. And when we look at the flag, it, it reminds us of who we are and where her, our loyalties lie and, and what we're all about. One of the churches that I served before coming to St. George's, I love their town logo. Uh, it had four things on the town logo, and it represented what the town was founded on. It had an anchor to represent the marina. It had a bundle of wheat to represent the agriculture industry, the railroad, uh, a railroad car to represent the railroad and how that has helped boost through the town. And the largest part of this crest of the town was a silhouette of the church that I used to serve, and it just reminded me of... Uh, just what the foundation was that, you know, religion was important to building the town, the marina, the agriculture, and the railroad, and how that all helps bring about the town that I was serving at that time. And so today, when we look at the flag and we represent our freedom in Psalms uh, chapter 20, verse 5, it says this, May we shout for joy over your salvation, and in the name of God, set our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. The word banner here talks about a flag carrying and a standard, and that's what we're called to do is to carry our banner for God each and every day. And that banner represents who we are, just like the American flag was designed to be a banner of celebration for our freedom. So we need to carry the banner of our faith wherever we go, showing our loyalty to God and showing our loyalty uh, to the mission that God has set out for us. And that mission is to make disciples for the transformation of the world. And so with that, let us open up our time with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today, and I thank you for this opportunity that we get to come together and to worship you. And Lord, I pray that as we come together to worship and to, um, and to just be thankful for what you have done in our lives, may we not take it for granted, but may we move forward. And Lord, I pray for those that are suffering right now with loneliness, with cancer, with the injustices that are happening around the world. May we be people that seek justice and mercy as we serve you. May we show the love that you have shown us in the same way to all, no matter what their circumstances are. And Lord, we pray all this in your precious son's name. Amen. 
like I said this morning, we have some special music that we're going to have, and we're going to start off by uh, listening to Mark and Eric with God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside me and guide me through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean. Like with gold. morning we're jumping into our message called a highway to tomorrow so if you have your bibles or your phone handy would or if you just want to listen whatever works best for you we're going to be in philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14 and in this verse we're going to be talking about the highway to tomorrow how to live our best life and and uh, the author of Gull Gulliver Travels, Jonathan Swift, he always used to say, may, your, may you live every day of your life. May you live every day of your life. And that's what we try to do is that every day we try to live our lives the best to our ability. But in Philippians chapter 3, Paul lays down this wonderful plan of how that is possible amongst all the chaos and all the struggle that's going around. And when I think about the Apostle Paul, he has the great authority to speak on this topic because if you look at his life, he was shipwrecked. He was falsely arrested, thrown in prison many times. He went without food and affected with different illnesses. And so, brothers and sisters, if Paul can still have a great outlook on life amongst the circumstances that he is going through and to live his best best life, I think you and I have the capability of doing the same. So Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14 in the Common English Bible says this, it is not that I have already reached this goal 
or I have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab a hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself do not think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. And so there are three groups of people, in my opinion, that are listening today. And I don't know what group you may fall into, but there's one that are the satisfied group. You know, like after you've had a meal and you're not miserable because you've overeaten, but you are just satisfied to the core. You are resting on your own achievements saying, I'm okay, everything's all right because I have arrived and I am satisfied with my life. If that's the case for you, then there is not much ahead of you for tomorrow. You've already arrived. What do you have to look for? How to live your best life if you already have arrived? Then there is the dissatisfied folks, and maybe you are dissatisfied with yourself or with others and the life circumstances that surround you. is such a condition, tomorrow doesn't hold much for you either because of the dissatisfaction that you're holding on today, you're gonna carry on into tomorrow. And then there's the unsatisfied, and this is where I hope you find yourself. And for me, I find myself going in between dissatisfied and unsatisfied, to be completely honest. And Paul puts himself in this unsatisfied category. And I hope that is where most of you are this morning, like I said. It is the condition where we believe that there is more to life than what we are getting out of it. And where we realize there is more we can do in life. It is that we realize that we are not finished yet, that there is much still to accomplish. Therefore, tomorrow has much in store for us, for you, and for me. Paul says that he has not arrived, but he does one thing, and that one thing is that he hones in on what he is called to do. In Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life, he talks about five different specific purposes for each individual. And I am not going to go into all five of those, but I want to encourage you to figure out what you were made to do. God has formed you and created you in God's image so that you can fulfill the purpose that God has placed in your life. And so many times we are looking for that purpose, but it's some most of the times it's right there in front of us. And that's the thing is we need to understand what that one purpose is. Here at St. George's United Methodist Church, our one purpose is to be a bridge of hope to the community. And to be a bridge of hope to the community, we are looking at what are those roads that are not there in our community that we can pave and make that bridge to help our community to be a better place. And you've heard it said, and I've said it many times myself, I have too many irons in the fire. Now, I want to suggest with suggest to you that that phrase is all wrong. And I think it should be that we have too many fires that we're putting our irons in because we are given one iron, we are given one life, and we have a lot of fires that we're trying to put that iron in to figure out what is going on. And we have to decide where we are going to put our lives. We have to decide what our goal and purpose is going to be. And Paul says, this one thing I do. And that's what I'm encouraging to do, church, is to figure out what is that one thing for you that you can do to help the kingdom of God be a better place, a better witness to what God has called us to do, to be the hands and feet and the mouthpiece of God. One time when I was a young boy, my parents, we went to see a friend and, and uh, that friend took me and my dad out to another friend's house and there was a bunch of crows and they had the guns out and they were shooting crows and there's this huge crowd of crows in this cornfield and around the pumpkin field and that was the first time I ever shot the gun and I shot the gun and, and all the crows went flying away and I didn't hit a single one. 
And the problem was, was not that I was a bad shot, but my problem was I wasn't aiming on one thing. I was aiming at the whole group. And we are called to focus in and to set our aim on that one purpose, on that one thing that God has called us to do. We are not to shoot without aiming. We need to center our aim on God's purpose and God's plan, not only for you as an individual, but for us as a church. Now I'm going to read Philippians 3 again, but this time I'm going to read it from the message version. And the message version puts it like this. It says, I am not saying that I have it all together, that I've made it, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I am not turning back. Hallelujah. And that's the thing is we need to have our eye on the prize. We have to have our eyes on the purpose, the goal, the prize, what we are supposed to be living for and how to get the best out of life. We need to understand that there's these six little words that we can couple together to get the formula for how we can live our best life. And so the first set of two words is forget about yesterday. Just forget about it. Forget about it. Forget what is behind you. And that's one of the hardest things to do. I don't know about you, but there are many times for me, the things that happened in the past, the things that happened yesterday, they just want to speak in our minds and creep up. Yes, life is less than what it can be if we keep carrying around yesterday's burdens with us. We're called to lay those burdens down. He is calling us to make a conscious refusal to let all that stuff absorb our attention and impede our progress. And God is calling us to not let that stuff from yesterday to impede the progress that he has set out for you and for me, brothers and sisters. And today, We come together as St. George's United Methodist Church and we celebrate our praise, celebration and praise service where we praise God for what he's doing and what God is calling us as we move forward. And today as we come together, God has done many different things between the bonfire that we have and and had a record number of people from the movie nights that we've started and people's coming out and and people coming to church and just different things that has happened. And we just thank God for it. And I encourage you, brothers and sisters, continue to live out what God has called us to do, to love God and to love others. And we can party today, but we need to work for tomorrow. Paul did not let his failures or his successes abstract his present running God's race for him. He could not change the past, but he could change the meaning of the past. Think about that. The things that have happened in our past, the troubles that have uh, we've come across, we cannot change those, but we can change how they affect us. We can change how they impede us from doing what God has called us to do. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, So then, with endurance, let us also run the race and let that is laid out in front of us. Since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that traps us. See, we're in a race. And that's the thing is we are in a race and the race is on and it's time to take off the weights and take off the sweatsuits and just go, 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 go. And that's what we're called to do. See, when it's time to run the the race, we take off the weights, we take off the sweatsuit and we get ready to run, brothers and sisters. And that's what we are called to do. We are called to run. We are called to move forward and to not look back at the past victories. Not look back of who used to be here, who's not here anymore, but we need to look forward to what God is calling us to do, not um, looking back at what former pastors have done, what uh, positions you may have served, 
what uh, dedications and efforts have happened because they are all great and wonderful things, but they are in the past. We need to look towards the future of what God has called us to do. And when we look at past failures, maybe it's frictions between you and someone else in the church, hurt feelings, um, you know, this different things, unfaithfulness, different things that happen. We need to let that go and we need to move forward. All that has gone on is to help us run today's race, not to weigh us down. Forgetting what is behind us builds on, forgetting what is behind us is building on them, but not carrying them with us. Only Jesus can enable us to go, to let go of our past victories and past failures in order to get on with the race for today. The race is not looking back, but looking forward. You know, too many runners have lost races because as they're getting towards that finish line, they look to the right or to their left or behind them to see how close the other competitors are. And they lose their focus. And we're called to keep laser focus because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we need to remember to live for today. Paul says that he tries to, he tries as hard as he can straining towards the goal and that's the second two letter word phrase is to live for to live today and that's what we're called to do is to live for today and suppose that you only have a couple of months maybe weeks maybe days to live what would you do you would live for that day live each and every day as it's the last and that's what we are called to do is to live each and every day for the fullest, serving God and what God has called us to do. But here's the thing. God only gives us today. We are not guaranteed or promised for tomorrow. But so many times we assume that we can take what is going on today and take it into tomorrow. But we are not guaranteed for tomorrow. Yet we often assume we will have plenty of tomorrows than all we are assured of is today. And that's the thing is that today is a gift from God and we need to be glad and live today. It is a gift from the God who loves us. And we need to live today where you are. And so many times we live in the ifers. And I don't know about you, but I'm an ifer. And that means that so many times instead of focusing on what's going on today, I'm looking forward in the future. What if this happens? What if this goes on? And because of that, it causes me to not live in the moment and maybe not make the most wisest decisions today because I'm too forward thinking about the ifs. And there's nothing wrong with forward thinking and analyzing everything, but what's wrong with that is if it entraps us and entangles us and causes us not to get things done today, especially when God is calling to this. Um, and we are, you know, and we are not responsible to live anyone's life but our own. You know, do you know what the most busiest day is? Do you know what the most busiest day is? Someday. That's the most busiest day is someday. Because how many times have we said, someday I'm going to get to that. Someday I'm going to do that. And if all those some days would come together, that would be the most busiest day of our life. But we need to live today with purpose. And there's an illustration of Mr. and Mrs. Walker. They used to attend a lighthouse on a reef in New York Harbor. And her husband came down with pneumonia and went to the hospital. And she stayed to guard the light. And a couple days later, some men came out and told her that her husband had passed away. And for 32 years, she kept the light going. And after the death of her husband. And so as her, she's getting ready to retire, a reporter comes out and says, ask her this one question. Um, what would, um, she said, uh, they asked her about, you know, why did she keep going after her husband passed away? And this is what she said is that, her husband used to say, watch the light, Mary, watch the light. And so that's what she did. She watched the light and we are called to watch the light. We are called to be the light bearer that Christ has given us. Only Jesus can give us the life purpose. He's the one who creates you in the womb of your mother and gave you a purpose. And he is the one 
who has birthed St. George's United Methodist Church as individuals and as a church, we are called to find our purpose in him. Living for Christ, not desiring to be someone else or to be somewhere else, but we are called to uh, be who God has called us to be, be content to where God has placed me and you and us and us as a church, but not be content with standing still. And we need to trust for tomorrow. Matthew 6, 34 tells us, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble for its own. And so instead of worrying about tomorrow, we need to trust for tomorrow. Now here's the thing. That's not saying that we don't need to work today to be ready for tomorrow. See, there's, there are some things that we can do today to help us fulfill what God wants us to do tomorrow. You know, a student can study for a test today that they're going to take tomorrow so that they will not fail. A salesperson can make calls and cultivate customer relationships today in order to have a better commission tomorrow. If she doesn't work today, not much income for tomorrow. As Christians of, and believers of God, we are called uh, you and me to be the hands and feet. And if we want to see things change, we need to be on our knees in prayer today so that we can see the change tomorrow. We need to be in action today so that we can see the fruit of our actions tomorrow. And that's what we are called to do. To be in good health tomorrow means we need to exercise, eat right, sleep right, and take care of our bodies. Seeing this church grow tomorrow means our time, our effort, our faithfulness, our money, and our prayers today so that we can be around for another 200 plus years fulfilling the great commission that God has set in front of us. And we need to trust tomorrow to God to do the things we cannot do. God is in tomorrow and we can trust that he is working for tomorrow to take care of the important things that we are going to face. The same God who has seen us through and blessed us, like I said, over 200 years here at St. George's is still going to be paving the way for better things if we plan today for tomorrow. And that's the thing. Florence Chadwich, she was uh, doing a 21-mile swim from this island to, uh, to the coast of California. And she was swimming. There was, it was a horrible day to do it. It was foggy. Uh, she, they had boats around her shooting at sharks and shooing them away. And, and the water was cold and she stopped. She gave up and she was only a half a mile away from shore. And this is what she said. She said if, if she knew that she was only a half a mile away, she probably would have not gave up. And a couple weeks later, she did the swim and made the world record. And that's the thing, folks. We need to keep our eyes on what we are called to do. Verse 14 says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenly word in Christ. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, trust him for the next half mile, trust him for the future, you'll be excited about what he's doing. And that excitement will cultivate people and wonder what has got them so excited. And you can share that love that you have, whether it's through action or or deed, or through verbal. God is out in our future. God is here, and he can lead you towards the prize. And if we trust in God, if we do this formula, because we ain't seen nothing yet, that God is going to do amazing and, and, and marvelous things. And that's why, church, I always say, the best is yet become, is to come, because I believe that God has something that I ain't seen nothing yet, and it's going to rock my socks off. And I truly believe that the best is yet to come each and every day for the church, for me, for my family. And we need to trust tomorrow. It is worth your investment today, and it is worth putting in the master hands. And that's the thing. The best will never, the best is yet to come, will not come if we do not invest in today and put the things in the master hands. So it's a simple formula for us to enjoy and get the most out of each and every day. It is to forget about yesterday, to build on it 
build from it. Live life today where you are, giving all you have and taking the lessons that you learned from yesterday and applying them to be better today. And we need to trust tomorrow because God is already there. And I don't know where you're at today in this whole process, whether you are satisfied, dissatisfied, unsatisfied. Don't know if um, you're committed to this or not. But this is what I do know, that God loves you, that God wants a relationship with you. And you may be have wandered off and not getting the best out of life. And it is possible to come back. Maybe you've never been in a relationship with God and you want to know more and, and accept that. It's really simple. And if you want to connect and talk about this more, please fill out the connect card in the link that's in the description, or if you say, hey, I want to learn more about Jesus. I want to know what accepting Jesus is all about. There's a link there too. But would you please pray with me? Lord God, I thank you for today, and I just pray that as we uh, come together, that we realize that we are your children, that we are your hope, and that we, that, that we can place our hope and trust in you. Lord, for those of you that are, Lord, be with those that are listening that are struggling right now, that may have walked away. Help them to realize that it's as easy as saying, Lord, I need you more in my life. And those that may not have a relationship with you, help them to understand and to, to, to say this prayer, to say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know I mess up and I have not been living my life to the fullest like you require. Please come into my life and help me to live better days. Lord, we thank you that you are work everywhere and in every situation and every place. Amen. Right now, we have a couple more songs uh, that Mark and Eric and Mr. Charles have done as we continue our celebration and praise service.
song um thought of it and thought of you so here it goes somewhere over the rainbow way up high there's a upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you find me somewhere fly beyond the rainbow why oh why can't i i hope you liked it
joining us and I hope you enjoyed those music numbers um, it's a different service but God is in control and God knows what's going on and I have a couple of special of announcements that I want to give to you first of all we are continuing our parking lot service if you um, uh, want to come out and join us in the parking lot we've got a radio transponder now so you can sit in your car and in the AC and listen or you can if it's a nice day roll down your windows whatever but we would love for you to join us that way as well or continue to watch online whatever way of worship suits you best the other thing too is next Sunday is Father's Day and I'm excited not only because it's Father's Day but also because we start a brand new series it's called the psalms of summer where we'll be looking at different psalms throughout the summer season this uh, saturday before sunday is the beginning of summer which i cannot wait i've been collecting uh sh hawaiian shirts all um all year to wear for this summer series as we're going to rock out to uh, some psalms and some songs at the same time and uh, the other thing, too, is church, we love you here at St. George's, and we want the best for you. And, and I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your uh, willingness to uh, be flexible during this fluid situation of the COVID-19. And because of the coronavirus and, and or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, um, and the things that we need to do of what the governor has recommended and required us to do, what the bishop has recommended and required us to do, there is a lot that needs to happen. And we met uh, earlier this month as the board of trustees. And with my recommendation to them and discussing about that, we have decided to uh, keep worshiping online and in the parking lot and also um via dial my calls because we could reopen the church but it wouldn't be the same because of having to wear masks and no singing um and things in that nature so things would be a lot different and so we feel that uh we're just going to hold off and hopefully the first sunday in september we will be back together here but for right now um we just want you to be safe and and secure and who knows things may change and 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 that date may change and be sooner we don't know but as of right now that's the plan our plan is to keep you safe because we love you and we want the best and we want when you come back to church that uh, we can sing God's praises and do uh, church as normal as possible um, because of right now looking at what we have to do, there's not much difference between what we're doing online and what we would do in person besides there'll be people sitting here in front of me. And then no matter what, no matter when we reopen the church, we're still going to do online services. So those that watch can, uh, can keep watching and keep joining us. And we'll also keep doing dial a sermon and things so that we can stay connected as a family so that whenever we reopen the doors and you feel safe coming back to your St. George's that you're you're still connected whether it's 
a couple of weeks, couple of months after we open the doors that you feel safe coming back. We don't want to uh, stop ministering with you and also to you. So with that, um, with that being said, um, we encourage you to keep supporting the church. There's three ways that you can do that, and that is by mailing uh, mailing your tithes and offerings in or doing e-giving through our website or the app. You can look on the app and uh, the Give Plus app and put in our zip code and find our church. Um, And with that, I thank you so much for joining us. May you go forth realizing that the best is yet to come. May you go taking this formula of uh, living life for today, not letting what tomorrow, what happened tomorrow have a huge impact on today and not looking towards tomorrow, but living today so that we can fulfill the mission that God has called us to do. I love you. God bless. Hope you can join us next week.